We're here again. Thank you, Jesus. What a beautiful day. We give God praise. All I have is you. Thank you, Jesus. May God give someone rest tonight. You can connect and share with your friends. Thank you, Jesus. It's a beautiful day. Thank you, Jesus. All I have is you. All I have is you. This is grace for this season. Let's share a few thoughts on how to conduct ourselves within this season. What you do now will either open the doors for the new year or shut the doors in the new year. I'm sure you're aware that what you do can be the key to a door opener to somebody in your family. It will either close the door against someone or open the door for someone in your family. Open door is a man. In this season, doors are opening and doors are closing. I trust God that your doors will open. Take a few minutes and worship with God. Worship with us and invite your friends to connect to this broadcast. It's just a 30 minutes broadcast. We share a few thoughts on managing ourselves in this season. There's grace to cover the season. Connect and invite your friends. I believe somebody will be blessed in this broadcast. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's the word in my mouth in this season. Thank you, Jesus. He thought oh, the Lord has helped us. Thank you, Jesus. If it had not been for the Lord on our side. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for friends. Thank you for enemies. Thank you for haters. Thank you for gossips. Thank you for betrayers. It has contributed to making me who I am. A more matured person. Thank you, Father. Through it all, we are still standing. There's a thousand and one reasons to say thank you. God is faithful. Invite your friends right away. Time is ticking. We have just 30 minutes for this broadcast. And we give way to other things. Tomorrow we start again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We have one more minute to take an invite. Start a watch party. I believe God will direct somebody's steps today. Grace is contagious. <laughs> Grace can be transferred. Grace can be infected. Yes, this program will infect someone with grace. Things will work for you this end of year. Doors will open for you this end of year. Help will come to you this end of year. You will not be stranded. You will smile again. That is what this program is all about. Gather your family Somebody close to you needs to listen to what I will discuss tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In a few minutes, we will roll on. Connect and share with somebody. Thank you, Jesus. I welcome every one of you connecting. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want to welcome every one of you that is connecting to this program tonight. We will soon roll on. We want to carry everybody along. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Tonight, I want to be sharing with us on something. Hey, Apostle Lamauda, God bless you. The rugged Monsino, I salute you. Come on, let's let's flow on something tonight. I believe will be a blessing to someone. I'm going to be speaking on discretion. Discretion, discretion. Discretion. And what is discretion? D I S C R E T I O N. Discretion. What is discretion? Discretion by the Webster Dictionary means the quality of having or showing discernment or good decision. Good decision. It also means the ability to make responsible decisions. Responsible decisions. The dictionary says it's the freedom to decide what should be done in a particular situation. What should be done in a particular situation. And tonight I want us to look at a few things before we move on today. I salute you. Your grace. Justice and marriage is so good to have you on this platform. I salute you, sir. Now, tonight, let's look at discretion. This is a season of events. Multiple activities. Human traffic has increased. Everywhere. Car traffic, there's virtually every town now, it's under lock from traffic. You are going to have uninvited visitors you're going to have invited visitors. There's multiple activities going on at the same time and you are required to be present in virtually all of them. A man, it is a time you will need to be in four or five different occasions in one day. We need discretion now. I'm going to start it today and possibly end it tomorrow. I mean, on the topic of discretion. But tonight, I want to deal on discretion as it relates to offenses. Proverbs 19.11. Somebody, somebody please connect to this. This is important. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 11. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 11. I'm going to be reading it from different versions and I need you to just listen to this. This is very important. This is very, very important. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 11. I need you to take note of it. I need you to take very serious note of this scripture. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 11. Oh my God. Proverbs 19. I need you to get it. 
verse 11. And I'm going to be reading King James first. Look at this. And it says, Oh, thank you, Dr. McDavid, all the way from Milan, Italy. God bless you. Look at this. The discretion of a man deferred his anger. And it is his glory to pass over a transgression. The discretion of a man deferred his anger, and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. Now, the good news says, if you are sensible, you will control your temper. When someone wrongs you, it is a great virtue to ignore it. It is a great virtue to ignore it. The easy Bible version says, look at this. A man who speaks wise words is patient. It is good to forget a wrong thing. It is good not to keep record, to forget a wrong thing. I want to read from the Amplified Version. The Amplified Version says, Good sense and discretion make a man slow to anger. And it is his honor and glory to overlook a transgression or an offense without seeking revenge and harboring resentment. Kai, I take it again from the Amplified. Good sense and discretion, reduce the volume. Good sense and discretion make a man slow to anger and it is his honor and glory to overlook a transgression or an offense without seeking revenge and harboring resentment. Men and brethren, can I tell you that this is a season of offenses? It's a season that people will get on your nerves. It's a season that you give instructions and they turn it upside down. It's a season that you give instructions in your house and somebody will just forget it and mess the whole day up. This is a season that somebody will get loose with his mouth and start talking anyhow. It's a season that people forget themselves and they begin to act anyhow. You see adults fighting traffic, tear sheds. You see people in shopping malls. People are on edge. Everybody is, a lot of people are on edge. Touchy, very little thing, they will spark. Just like a naked wire, they will shock. I want to talk to somebody tonight. It's a season of offenses. And here the Bible says, the discretion of a man will make him defy his anger. Don't vent your anger. This is a season that if you're not careful, you will wound people with your mouth. Words that they can never forget in their lifetime. And they will always stress you. Every day they mention your name, that word will strike and pierce their minds. In church, people are on edge. You see people, a lot of pastors will preach out of anger. A lot of ushers have resigned from their positions. A lot of choristers have gone on strike, traveled without notice, knowing they will be needed, all to vent their anger. A whole lot of people, women, wives, their, wives can't, their husbands can't touch them now. You will see a woman will wear her pants, and wear her tights and put on a jean shirt and put on a nightgown all to secure her territory. And nobody can cross it anyhow. Just to say, I'm angry with you. You're going to see men lock up their wallets. They don't care. Move out and come back late night and don't care what is happening to anybody. You listen to some of them and they say to hell with that woman. 
and you listen to some, every day is a threat. You are going. This Christmas, it will end. You will not return. I will deal with you. you all manner of things. And believers, anger has taken over prayers. Prayers of judgment, prayers of death. Anger has taken over prayers everywhere. And it is, I, say, I, I come back and I'm asking, what has happened to us? What has happened to us? Can we not for once discard certain things and dump them in the dustbin and move on happily in life? The Bible says here, it is to the honor and glory of a man to overlook. There are some you will react to, but there are some you will overlook. If you count every offense, my brother, you will shorten your life. This is a season of offenses. You come to wedding, you come to occasions, they won't give you food. You will get angry. You ask for water, nobody will respond to you. You will get angry. You enter a bus, you enter a train, you enter a plane, in the plane, everywhere. Somebody comes and takes your seat and he tells you, no, everybody sit anywhere you want. This is where I'm going to say it. And you just, every, you come into church, the usher says, stays here. You said, no, I can't stay here. I'm going there. You get to the tailor, your dress that was supposed to be ready two days ago is still on the table, has not been cut, is not ready. And you're supposed to use it tomorrow. Hold your temper. The person who borrowed money from you was supposed to have brought it and you have made a budget of what to do with that money and here you are hearing stories. My dear, take it easy. I want to tell somebody tonight, calm down. Calm down. It is to a man's glory to overlook offenses. You are driving and from nowhere one stupid man will come and break your headlamp will come and scratch your vehicle because it is a hurry to get passengers. And the moment they hit you, they will come down and nail down before you. Just to say that if you cannot accept sorry, then you're a very wicked man. <laughs> I don't know if you have found yourself in such a position. This is the season we are in. It's a season of offenses. It's a season when those you expected to come for your event one way or the other, they didn't come. You are offended. It is to a man's discretion to overlook offenses. Can I tell you something tonight? Being happy is a choice. Your being happy is a choice. People made you promises. You banked on it to do things in this season. And they have failed. Don't let them take your joy. They may have taken your money. They may have taken your time. They may have damaged your property. Don't let them damage your heart. In this season, you need Obioma to go through. You need a good heart. You need a happy heart. It's your responsibility to make yourself happy. You are not the one to make people happy. Listen to me. Don't dump. Don't make your husband responsible for your joy. Don't make your wife responsible. People are not responsible for your joy. Your joy should come from inside and infect people outside. I want to tell someone tonight, if you still nurse your grudge and your temper, you will not enjoy this season. This is a season of offenses. Everywhere you go, you wake up, wake up in the morning, when you want to iron your, your cloth, that is when they will take the light. And suddenly you discover that fuel has finished in the red generator. There's no gas anywhere. You have to move. Listen to me. Calm down. Calm down. Rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Refuse to take offenses. I believe I'm talking to someone tonight. This is not the season to leave your husband in the room and go to children's room to go and sleep. This is not the season. Listen, you will lose. This is not the time to 
to reject food in the house and you go to a canteen, a restaurant, and then you go there and spend money and eat the money that you're supposed to use to spend for some other things. You are losing. I believe I'm talking to someone today. Allow people to be who they want to be. Don't let them change you. Discretion, discretion. I am using this tonight. Please, defy your anger. The Bible says that anger rested in the bosom of fools. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 9. He said, don't be hasty in your spirit to be angry. Don't be hasty. Don't be quick. This spiritual gift of quick temper, send it back to the devil. It didn't come from God. Every little thing, any little thing, you react. Any little thing, there are, can you come to the level where you live above the natural? That which will make you shout, you just smile. No problem, let it be. Let it be. No problem. It wouldn't take anything. Somebody's owing you and did not pay. All this while, you are not dead. You have, you have survived. You have moved on without that money. You can even write it off and tell him, forget it. It's a burden on his head. Let it go. Not all of them anyway. Because there are some that will take you for granted. But the ones you know, God has brought you this far. One year, two years, you have done without money and you have done well for yourself. Why are you disturbing yourself? I want to tell someone tonight. Discretion. Refuse to negatively react. Remember, discretion is the freedom to decide what should be done in a particular situation. People are reacting. You have a lot of events, traditional marriages. You have weddings. You have housewarming. You have people traveling. You have people who will just come in. The food you prepared that you're going to spend and eat for the next one week. In two days, your children have finished it with their friends. And you want to break their head. Thank God that you have food for somebody to eat. Thank God that there are people who are coming to eat. A friend once came to my house and while we were having lunch with them, I learned that another man of God who called me that he just entered the town. I, I sent my driver, I said, come over and take lunch before you can settle in your hotel. And he came over. Before we finished another one, I said, come over. And we were like three families having lunch. And then when we were going, one of them said to my wife, how I wish I can have people come to my house and eat like this. And she said, I have a freezer full of food, but nobody's eating it. And my wife said to her, they don't just come, you invite them. We are in a season of offenses. The pastors are angry that nobody brought them. People have just finished Thanksgiving and harvest services and pastors are angry with what people brought for Thanksgiving. Are you the person to tell them what to bring? You don't know what they are going through. There's anger everywhere. There's, there's so much anger. It is to a man's honor to overlook offenses. You don't react to everything. I believe I'm talking to someone. Someone is boiling. There's something in your heart. It is affecting your sleep. It's affecting your appetite. You are boiling. Why will they talk to me anyhow? Why will he talk to me like this? He has to talk to you like this because that's who he is. He cannot be you. You don't talk like that. Allow people to be themselves. Don't let them change you. I'm speaking on discretion and I'm talking about grace for the season. You will wake up in the morning and give instructions in your own house, and somebody will turn it upside down. As if he didn't hear what you said. Some will forget it. Some will go do what they want to do. I don't know. It could be your wife. It could be your husband. It could be your children. It could be anybody. You come to the office, my brother, my sister. In this season, overlook offenses. Don't take a record. Let people go. Release people from the prison of your heart. I want to say that tonight. 
It is a joy. It's a joy to the world. And listen, the devil will do anything to tamper with that joy. People who just barge into your house and they didn't just come visiting. They want to stay two, three days and they didn't tell you they were coming. And these are people who will come with nothing, but they keep eat, they eat five times a day. If God has positioned you with the food, let them eat after they will go. Mother-in-laws that will come in, sister-in-laws that will come in, brother-in-laws that will come in, all to test your will, test your temper. This is a time to prove to yourself that you have grown up. Discretion. Discretion. I want to tell somebody today, your workers, your colleagues will get on your nerves. It's a season, every season of celebration is a season of offenses. And I'm going to encourage somebody tonight that God will help you to restrain yourself. That God will place people around you that can tell you, calm down. That God will give you the power to be able to stand and not make serious mistakes so that you don't say things you will regret. Overlook. When you react, you will say things you didn't mean to say. Discretion. We are talking about discretion of anger. Tomorrow night, just 30 minutes, we are going to be dealing with the discretion of money. And I'm going to be speaking about borrowing. Borrowing and lending. This is a season of expenses. It is very important that you manage yourself and not incur expenses or debts that will become a burden on your head. That is on one part. On the other part, it's important that you don't lend out money that becomes a trap. It's better you give people money to help them and not a money that you lend that becomes a burden. What do I mean? Somebody wants 20000 and then says, I will pay you by January 2nd. And you are planning to use it. Please, don't bank on that. If you can afford to give the person 5000 and say, I'm sorry, I can't give you a loan. This is what I can give you. Take. Rather than giving the person a 20000 and by March you have not received it and you get angry and you call police. Save yourself that stress. We are going to talk about it tomorrow. But for tonight, I want to talk about the grace to restrain yourself. Discretion. Discretion. Don't respond to everything. You are driving and somebody who doesn't know what is happening in front of you comes by the side and calls you idiots. What are you driving? Stupid man. You don't need to react. Don't behave like the brother who was rushing early Sunday morning. He's going to moderate the service. He's going to moderate the service and he was just in a hurry to go. But look at him driving. And somebody in front was blocking the way and the person was a learner. Was gradually cleared the way so that another person can overtake. This brother was going late and was rushing and rushing. And this man, he was honing and the man was taking his time. Eventually he moved by the side and this brother was about to overtake and all he could do was to raise his hand and say waka as he lifted up his hand overtaking to say waka and discovered that the person he wanted to say waka to is a member of their church going to the same church he's going to and he said oh brother bye 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 can you imagine that somebody who is going to run the service a few minutes is saying waka. It is to a man's discretion. Hold yourself in the traffic. Hold yourself at home. Hold yourself in church. Hold yourself in the office. Your, your, you, you, you have things to do and secretaries. You have clerks who will not do their job. Hold yourself. Nothing has spoiled that cannot be redeemed. I want to pray tonight for what I call the grace for restraint. The grace 
for restraint. That is the prayer I'm going to be praying for somebody tonight. That God will restrain you. That God will not allow you to make mistakes, to say things that you are not supposed to say. That God will help you and plant someone who will be there to say, no, you can't do this now. You can't do this now. If you read 1 Samuel 25, verse 32 to 34, when David was going to destroy the family of Nabal, and a big girl stopped and begged him and spoke to him and spoke to him and said, I know who you are. I know where you're coming from. I know you are fighting for the Lord. I know. Don't fight my husband. Please don't do this. Don't do this. I believe you will be somewhere. I believe God is with you. And after this woman said, or she said, David made a comment and said, Blessed be the Lord God who sent you to me this day to stop me from shedding blood and having blood in my hands. May God plant someone who can restrain you. Some people don't listen to their husbands. Some people don't listen to their wives. Just like Nabal. But may God plant someone who can stop you from making a costly mistake. In Genesis chapter 20, if you read verse 1 to 6, Abimelech took the wife of Isaac, or the wife of Abraham, and in the night, God appeared in a dream and said, you're a dead man for taking this man's wife. And Abimelech said, I took it in the innocence of my heart. I took her. She told me, she herself told me that Abraham is her brother. Abraham told me that she is her, his sister. How can you blame me? And God said, yes, I know. I was the person that stopped you from touching her. He had taken her, but God stopped him from touching that woman. May God give you grace that will restrain you from taking a wrong decision this season, from speaking the wrong things this season, from doing the wrong things this season. May God preserve you from a mistake, from offenses that come to trap the future. May that grace be released to somebody tonight. Receive that grace. You will enjoy this season. It's a season of rest. Is a season of celebration. Is a season of joy. Nothing will tamper it. Nothing will tamper with it in your life. I appreciate every one of you that's part of this broadcast. I want to thank every one of you that has joined. Oh, I saw my father here, Reverend Dr. Vincent Alaje. Oh, Daddy, God bless you for being on this platform. I saw Justice Eliezer Mwereji. God bless you. All the way from Milan. I've seen people from Abuja. I've seen from Lagos. I've seen from Norway. I have seen from Austria. I have seen people from US. I've seen people from Enugu where I stay. You can share this video. Tomorrow night, it's another night. We're going to continue with lending and borrowing money. This is a season of spending. You must be discreet. Tonight, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you now and forevermore. May grace multiply to you in Jesus' name. See you tomorrow. God bless you.